Hi, my name is Dave and I am Military Dial Armour. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be taking this Trumpeter KV2 kit number 00312 from bare plastic to a finished paint job using the distress method. I bought this kit to practice my wild beads and my hull texturing. I've never done wild beads using putty before. I've used stretch through, but this is my first time using putty. They turned out okay, could be better, but I just need to, to practice the technique. Here are some photos of the texturing and the wilding, but this video is about painting, so let's get started. The base coat of the camouflage is Tamiya XF73 Dark Green JGSDF. This was applied in thin layers to build up the colour slowly and to make nice even coats. After the base coat was dry, I applied the AK Warn Effects, which is AK088. I allowed that to dry for about 15 minutes between each layer and then applied the top coat of XF81 Dark Green 2 RAF. I've never used chipping fluid before, I've always used hairspray in the past, so I decided to start off on the fenders. I'm just using tap water to activate the chipping fluid with a selection of soft brushes and a J cloth to remove any excess water from the brush. Just working on one section at a time, allowing the water to activate the chipping fluid and then removing it to remove the paint until I get the desired effect. These two layers of paint are meant to represent the worn off paint and then there'll be a darker layer applied later on certain areas that represent the actual paint colour itself. So it's a three, three paint process. And I've never done it before, this is the first time trying it, but I'm quite happy with it so far. Here are some photos after chipping. Some of the chips were a bit too big, but I was overall I was quite happy with the effect. Next I apply the darker green, which is XF61 dark green. I thin this down about 50-50 with thinners and paint, which allows me to build up the layers slowly and just create a nice modulation effect. It's applied in the recesses where you'd get less foot traffic to represent the, the original paint colour. I've also attached the fender to a piece of wood with some double sided sticky tape to make it easy to handle. Just slowly building up the colour, starting from the, the inner edge where the fender meets the hull where you get less traffic and also where the fender mounts are and around the edges of the storage box. And here are a couple of photos of the finished product before I move on to the next process. Next using the lighter two colours, the XF73 and the XF81, I highlight the edges and raise detail on the, on the fenders like hinges and bolts. Here are some photos after the highlighting. Once I'd finished the fenders, I moved on to the turret and you repeat the process from previously, just removing small areas at a time so the tubing fluid doesn't go too far and you get a nice result. Once I'm happy with the turret, I move on to the lower hull. Repeat the process again, just activating chip and fluid with water and then removing it with a soft bristle brush. And again, I've got a J cloth to remove any excess water off the brush. Just work in small areas so you don't overdo the process.
Then we move on to the final Irish layer, which is XF61, dark green 2. Just start at the bottom of the turret, working on the edges. Again, this paint has been thinned about 50-50, so I can put plenty of layers down, but not actually have that much opacity for the paint, and it lets you build up a nice effect. Once I've applied the paint, I go over it with just air to dry it off, make it dry quicker, so I can continue the process a bit sooner. I also use vertical streaks on some of the edges where the vision slits are to create streaking. Moving on to the other side of the turret, I did a bit of a boo-boo and removed too much of the top coat here, but I'm going to try and fix it with the darker paint. Again, moving up and down, making streaking effects so it looks like the, the water's come down, or just environmental effects. I think I managed to cover that up quite nicely. I was quite pleased with it. I was a bit worried I'd have to go over and do it again. But once we've done the side, we move on to the top. Again, just starting the areas where there'd be less foot traffic and also shadows. Not there'd be many shadows on top, but. and working along the outer edge of the turret top. This will create a nice contrast between the, the sides and the top, especially after a bit of fresh highlighting, which I'll do later. Just constantly moving the turret so you can get into the nice position to apply the paint. Moving on to the lower hull, I do some panel masking to make a nice transition. I also do some masking on the rear hull using this time piece of cardboard. Anything will do really, just a nice straight edge so you can get a nice contrast between the panels. Next I'll reattach the fenders and work on the inner part where you get the, the most shadow or the least wear so that it will match the side of the tank so it doesn't look awkward. With the dark layer done, we move on to highlights. Here I'm just picking out the grab handles 
with XF73. This is again just to create more contrast between the, the two colours. So these are obviously not, they're attached to the turret but they're standing off. So by highlighting them you bring them out of the turret a little bit. And then working on the edge of the turret which along with the low lighting you've done on the top with the airbrush will make the, the turret colour pop out and you'll see a visible difference between the sides and the top plate of the armour. And also do the end of the gun barrel and also the bolts on the front of the gun. I repeat this process on the lower hull and just work around the tank until I'm happy with the end result. That's the end of the painting process for this kit. I've enjoyed the distress technique, it's been very interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave you with some stills of the finished kit and she's already put all those now, but my next video will be a build. Not sure what yet, but I hope you'll see you next time. Please consider leaving a like, subscribing, or leaving a comment. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.